OK, so we're going to prove that the product of four consecutive positive integers can't be a square number. We'll actually start off with a slightly simpler case. We'll just show that the product of two consecutive positive integers can't be a square number to illustrate how our proof's going to work. And actually, at the end, we'll be able to generalise this and find an argument to show that the product of even eight consecutive positive integers can't be a square number. So if we're working with just two consecutive positive integers, their product we can write as n times n plus 1, which when we expand this, we get n squared plus n. And the big idea here for our proof is that we're going to show that this is between two consecutive square numbers. So you can see, for example, that n times n plus 1, this n squared plus n, this is definitely strictly greater than n squared. So it's bigger than this square number. But then if we consider the next square number after n squared, this will be n plus 1 all squared. When we expand this, we get n squared plus 2n plus 1, which, given that n is a positive integer here, this is going to be strictly greater than n squared plus n, or it's strictly greater than our n times n plus 1, our product of the two consecutive positive integers there. So what have we shown here? We've shown that our product of the two consecutive integers is first of all it's strictly greater than n squared, so it's strictly greater than this square number, but we've also seen that it's strictly less than the next square number, so it's strictly less than n plus 1 all squared. And you can see that there are definitely going to be no square numbers between n squared and n plus 1 all squared, so this means that n times n plus 1, our product of the two consecutive positive integers, can't be a square number. So now let's try and do the same thing for the product of four consecutive positive integers. You can see when we expand this product, we get aquatic in n. So we might want to look for our nearby square numbers. We could try something like n squared all squared, which gives us n to the power of four. But you can see this is far too small. And even if we were to do n squared plus one all squared, we would only have n to the four plus two n squared plus one. And we're not even getting this cubic term our n cubed term. So if we were to try instead doing n squared plus n all squared, we do now get a cubic term. So we get n to the 4 plus 2 n cubed plus n squared. But we still want to get 6 n cubed in order to be close to this original product. So to get a 6 there, let's try n squared plus 3 n all squared, which when we expand the bracket now gives us n to the 4 plus 6 n cubed plus 9 n squared. And you can see this where n is a positive integer. This is still going to be too small. So this is less than, if I just put star for our original product here, you can see this is still less than our original product. But if, for example, we were to increase this n squared plus 3n, if we were to try increasing this to something like n squared plus 4n, it would suddenly be far too big. And we also want to work with consecutive square numbers here. So we could try just the next square number, n squared plus 3n plus 1 all squared. So this is the next square number after n squared plus 3n all squared. And when we expand the brackets here, we actually get n to the 4 plus 6n cubed plus 11n squared plus 6n, and finally just plus 1. So you can see this is almost exactly the same as our original product, but we've got a plus 1. So this is strictly greater than star, so this is strictly greater than our original product. So this is really cool now because we can just conclude then that n squared plus 3n all squared is strictly less than n times n plus 1, our product going up to n plus 3 of four consecutive positive integers. And we also know that this is strictly less than n squared plus 3n plus 1. All squared. So we've actually seen here that this is, once again, sandwiched strictly in between two consecutive square numbers. So there are no square numbers in between n squared plus 3n all squared and the next one n squared plus 3n plus 1 all squared. So then we can conclude that our product of four consecutive positive integers can't be a square number there. And in terms of our conclusion there, we've also shown that our product of four consecutive positive integers is a square number minus 1, effectively, because we've seen that this square number is 1 bigger than our product. So in terms of making the conclusion easier, we don't necessarily need to sandwich it between these. We can just say, well, it's a square number minus 1, so it can't actually be a square number itself. 
And now I'll just finish by seeing how this argument can be used to show that the product of eight consecutive positive integers also can't be a square number. So here if we have our product n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 all the way up to n plus 7 and we expand the brackets, we get this degree 8 polynomial in n. So here we're going to apply the same sort of procedure as before. We might start just looking at n to the power of 4 all squared. This would give us n to the power of 8. But we want to make this as close as possible to our original product. So to get this plus 28n to the 7 term, let's add in plus 14n cubed, so that then when we square all of this, we get n to the 8 plus 28n to the 7. But now we've got the issue that when we square this and expand, we have our coefficient of n to the 6 is too small. We want this to be 322. So then I won't go over all of the details of the calculations here, but essentially at this point we need to add in 63n squared, so that then when we square all of this, expand the brackets, we do get 322n to the 6. But then at this point, our n to the 5 coefficient is too small, so to get this up to 1960 when we square everything here, it turns out that we need to add 98n, which gets us our 1960n to the 5. But then our n to the 4 coefficient when we square all of this and expand is too small, so we now, to get this up to 6769, we need to add 28, which actually then makes this slightly too big when we consider some of the other terms. So this expression here, this quartic in n, when we square this, this is greater than this star, our original product here. So this is strictly greater than star, and this is true for all values of n you can check. So I appreciate I'm omitting some of the details here. And this is particularly interesting now, because if we look at the previous square number, so if we just call this f of n, this quartic, all of our terms which depend on n, so we've essentially got f of n plus 28, if we look at our previous square number, which will just be f of n plus 27, and square this, and it turns out that this is going to be less than our original product, so this is less than our star here, and we know that this is less than f of n plus 28, all squared. So we've got two consecutive square numbers, f of n plus 27 all squared, and f of n plus 28 all squared. And this Second inequality here, this is true for all n greater than or equal to 1, so for all positive integers n. But unfortunately, this first inequality, this is only true for all n greater than or equal to 4, it turns out. So if we take our original product and subtract this f of n plus 27 all squared, we get a quartic, which is generally positive for all values of n greater than or equal to 4, but it doesn't quite work just for n equals 1, 2, and 3. But I still think this is really cool that we have, essentially, it's almost just a one-line proof that this f of n plus 27 all squared is strictly less than our product of eight consecutive integers, and this is less than the next square number, f of n plus 28 all squared. So other than having to check the cases where n is 1, 2, and 3, which is straightforward enough, we can just read off having done the algebra and expanded the brackets here, we can just read off and say that the product of eight consecutive positive integers can't be a square number because it lies strictly between two consecutive square numbers, so it can't itself be square.